Welcome to Mikunst Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you how to unlock Turbo Boost on Xeon E5 2600 series processors on the Chinese X99 motherboards. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide. First thing first, I'm not responsible for any possible consequences and damages that may occur after you try to follow my guide and apply it on your motherboard, your CPU and your RAM. You are the only one responsible for everything you do with your hardware. If you are still watching this video, I guess you understand all the risk of unlocking Turbo Boost and you are willing to risk it for the sake of getting a bit more performance out of your CPU. So let's get started. First we need to validate if you can actually unlock Turbo Boost on your motherboard with your processor using this guide. This guide is only applicable for Chinese X99 motherboards. But you can also use the same technique on branded motherboards. Most likely you will have to use a proprietary tool from your motherboard vendor to back up and flush your motherboard BIOS, but the rest of the steps will be identical. If your CPU is an engineer sample, then forget about unlocking Turbo Boost. It does not work with engineering sample CPUs. To identify if your CPU is an engineering sample, you can start CPU Z and take a look at the stepping section. The value shall be 2 or higher. If you have an engineering sample or qualification sample which has stepping 0 or stepping 1, do not even try to unlock Turbo Boost because it's not going to work. This guide shall also work for Xeon E5 V4, but it was not tested by me because I do not have such CPU, thus I cannot guarantee. Windows 10 X64 is the only operating system which is applicable with this guide. If you have different operating systems, the steps will be similar but not identical. Do your research and search online how to make Turbo Boost unlock on your system. I would rather suggest you to reinstall your Windows to Windows 10 x64. Windows must be installed in UEFI mode. To validate your Windows installation, you can open Disk Management tool and check if there is EFI partition on your system drive. If there is no such partition, this means that Windows is not installed in UEFI mode and I would recommend to reinstall Windows and remove all of the partitions from your system drive and let Windows create the partitions it needs itself. Windows must be up to date. While installing updates, Windows is often removing the required CPU drivers for the proper functioning of the Turbo Boost unlock. After Windows update you might have to install the drivers again, thus it's better to have up-to-date system when unlocking Turbo Boost. In order to install CPU drivers you also need a USB flash drive. USB 2.0 is preferable, but USB 3.0 shall also work. The flash drive size shall be at least 10 MB. If your hardware and software are meeting all of these requirements, go to the download link which is provided in the video description and download x99-tu.zip archive, which I have prepared specially for this guide. After downloading the archive, make sure to right-click on the archive, select Properties, check the checkbox Unlock, and then click Apply and OK. If you don't do this, Windows might restrict access to the files inside the archive which might lead to the errors during executing files which are required to Turbo Boost unlock. Once you have unlocked the archive, right-click on it and select Extract All. Extract it to some handy location. In my case, I put it into the C drive temp folder. Now it's time to prepare USB drive with CPU drivers. To avoid any possible mistakes and any possible data loss, I strongly recommend you disconnect all storage devices from your system, leave only the system drive. For example, if you have extra SSDs or extra hard drives or you have connected external hard drives or flash drives, remove everything from your computer. But before removing this, shut down your computer, disconnect everything but system drive and then boot back into the Windows. Let's prepare the USB flash drive. Click on the start button, type CMD and then click start as administrator. Inside CMD type disk part and click enter. 
After that, disk part utility is gonna be started in your command line. To list the disk connected to your computer, type list space disk and click enter. You will see the list of connected storage devices to your computer. There shall be two. One shall be your system drive, another one shall be your USB drive. Type select space disk space and then the number of your USB drive. Click enter. After that your USB drive is gonna be selected by the disk part utility. Type clean and press enter. This will remove all partitions and all the data from your USB drive. If you have any important information on the USB drive, make sure to copy it from the USB drive somewhere else first. After that type convert space GPT and click enter. This is going to convert your flash drive into GPT format. If you see the error message, the disk you specified is not MBR formatted, this means that your flash drive is already GPT and you can proceed further. After that, type exit and click enter to exit the disk part utility. Now we have a completely empty USB flash drive with no partitions and in GPT format. In order to copy the files to the flash drive, we need to create a new partition on the flash drive. For this, right click on the start button and select disk management. In the disk management, locate your USB flash drive. It shall be specified as unallocated space. Right click on the unallocated space and create new partition. Make sure to select FAT or FAT32 as the file system, NTFS is not going to work. Leave the size of the partition with the default value and name your flash drive as x99-tu. This name does not change anything, but it's nice to understand that this is gonna be your x99 turbo unlock flash drive. Once the partition is created, you have to copy all the files and folders from the EFI folder onto the USB drive. That's all. Now we have a USB drive prepared. At this point, you can either validate that your flash drive is prepared correctly or you can proceed with the guide. I strongly recommend to validate that the flash drive is prepared correctly. For this, keep your flash drive inserted into the computer and restart and select your EFI partition from the flash drive as the boot device and try to boot. If you see the following screen with the message to click escape, then the flash drive is prepared correctly. Here you can click escape, then type exit and continue back to Windows. Or you can reboot, select your system drive as the booting device and boot back into Windows. Once you are back to Windows, click Start, type CMD, then click Start as Administrator. Inside the console, type CD space and then path to your folder where you have unpacked the archive you have downloaded by the link provided in the video description. After the path, type slash FPT and then click Enter. In my case, it's CD C colon slash tamp slash fpt. In your case, the path will be different, depends on where you unpack the archive. After that, type dump.bat and click enter. This script will use fpt tool to create backup of your bias and will create two files x99.rom and x99.rom.bac. The second file is backup of the bias, do not touch it, in case of something goes wrong, you have to flush this bias back and have the default configuration of your motherboard. x99.rom is the file we are going to modify to enable Turbo Boost Unlock. To modify the bias, start the mmtool-a5.exe from the unpacked archive. Click load image button and select x99.rom file. Over here, go to the CPU patches tab 
and locate all the CPU patches with ID 06F2. In my case it's just one, but in some motherboard biases it might be two or more. Select one by one and then click the checkbox Delete Patch and apply it with the Apply button. Once that's done, click Save Changes. This will apply the changes in the x99.rom file. So after this, x99.rom file will have modified BIOS and x99.rom.bug will have your original BIOS. After the BIOS has been saved, close the MM tool application, go back to the console and execute flush.bat. This script is going to use the FPT tool to write x99.rom file into your motherboard BIOS. Wait until you see FPT operation passed. It shall be a green title. If you are having red title or any other errors which are indicating that BIOS was not successfully read or was not successfully flushed, most likely you are having blocked BIOS on your motherboard and this guide is not gonna work for you. You will have to use USB programmer to manually read the BIOS from your motherboard, after that modify it the same way, and then flush it back to the motherboard using the programmer. Once the BIOS has been successfully flushed onto the motherboard, make sure that your USB flash drive with the CPU drivers is connected to the computer. It's preferably to connect it to USB 2.0 ports these are the black ports, not the blue ports. And restart your computer. First restart after the BIOS update might take quite some time. It can go up to one minute. If you don't instantly see anything on your screen, do not panic and let it wait for a little while. If nothing shows after a few minutes, then most likely you have bricked your motherboard and now you have to go to the service center or use USB flash programmer to write back the x99.rom.bug BIOS. When the computer starts, select USB flash drive with UEFI prefix as the boot device. Once booted, click Escape and then you will be greeted with the command line. This command line utility is gonna be used to install required CPU drivers. First, you need to locate what are the names of your USB flash drive and your system drive. There shall be two drives, one called FS0, another one called FS1. You need to check description of each drive and find which one has USB inside the description. That one is your USB flash drive. In my case, FS1 is the USB drive and FS0 is the system drive. In your case, it might be different. If you have other drives connected, you will have FS2, FS3 or other things. If your Windows is not installed in UEFI mode, you will not see your system drive here and this is the problem. That's why you always need to check that Windows is installed in UEFI mode before modifying your BIOS. Once you located FS0 and FS1 names, we need to execute load space FS1 column slash v3.efi to validate the driver. Again, in this case FS1 is referencing to the USB flash drive. If in your case FS1 is the system drive and FS0 is the USB drive, you need to type FS0. The response shall be V3 all turbo set. If you see some other response, this means that your BIOS is not properly flashed or your flash drive is not prepared correctly. After that, execute CP space FS1 colon slash V3 dot EFI space FS0 colon slash EFI slash boot and click enter to copy the required CPU files from the flash drive to your system drive. Once the file is copied, it has to be added to the system. 
For this type BC FJ space driver space add space zero space FS zero colon slash EFI slash boot slash V3 dot EFI space quote V3 space full space turbo quote and click enter. Once this is done, type exit and click enter. This will load you back into the Windows. Once in Windows, you need to delete a file called MC update underscore genuine intel dot dll. The file is located in the system32 folder of the Windows installation. If you have Windows installed on the C drive and into the default location, which is Windows folder, you can use a script that I have prepared for this operation. In this case, Click on the start and type cmd, then click start as administrator. After that execute cd space and path to the unpacked archive where you have all the files from the downloaded archive. Click enter. After that type del minus mcu minus file dot bat. This script will create a backup of the MC update underscore genuine intel dot dll file and then delete the original file. If the script did not return any errors, then all went good. Open File Explorer and go to C Windows System32 and search for the MCU update underscore genuine intel dot dll file. There shall be no such file. But there shall be file mc update underscore genuine intel dot back. This is the backup file which you will have to use to restore the default Windows behavior. You can rename this file from dot back to dot dll and the default Windows drivers for the CPU will be back. If the script did not work or you have your Windows installed into the different location, you need to manually go to the system32 folder, locate the MC update underscore genuine intel dot dll file and delete it. Usually it's not possible to delete the files right away because your user will not have permissions to do that. In order to acquire the permissions, you need to right click on the file and then change ownership of the file. Your user shall be the owner of the file. Also, you need to grant everyone full control of the file. Then you can delete the file. Make sure that you have a backup of the file before deleting it. Once the file is deleted, you need to install VMware CPU driver for Windows. For this, click on the start, type CMD, select run as administrator, then do CD space and then path to the CPU MC update folder, click enter. After that type install.bat and click enter. After that type autostart.bat and click enter. That's all you have to do. Now it's time to validate your Turbo Boost unlock behavior. Restart your computer and run HW monitor with CPUs out. You can also start the Windows Task Manager to monitor the CPU frequency there. Scroll down to the CPU core frequency section in the HW monitor. Go to the bench tab of the CPU Z application and test your CPU. All CPU cores shall operate at the maximum turbo boost frequency. In my case, I am using Xeon E5 2678V3 with maximum turbo boost 3.3 GHz. Here you can see that CPU is running at 3.29 GHz which is roughly equal to 3.3 GHz. As I mentioned before, CPU is not always going to work at this frequency. CPU has power limitation, which is restricting CPU from clocking higher when heavy instructions are utilized. For example, if you're going to run Cinebench R20, which is using modern heavy instructions, CPU is going to consume extra power and downclock itself to 3.0 GHz in my case. In your case, CPU might downclock to some other value, like 3.1 or 2.8 GHz. In games though, with this example of Red Dead Redemption benchmark, you can see that all the CPU cores are turbo boosting as high as 3.3 GHz all the time. Because the games do not utilize the expensive instructions, 
and CPU is not over consuming the allowed amount of electricity. If everything was done correctly, now you shall be enjoying your unlocked Xeon E5. Remember to reinstall the CPU drivers if Windows removes them when installing Windows updates or if the system crashes and Windows restores to the previous state or if you decide to change some BIOS settings, the drivers might be gone as well. If your system suddenly starts to freeze, blue screen or just not being responsive, this means that Windows has removed the CPU drivers. To reinstall the drivers, you can use the same guide as for the first installation. Make sure to give me a like, subscribe to my channel and share your experience. It's interesting for all of us to get to know which motherboard and which CPU is successfully or unsuccessfully unlocking Turbo Boost with the Xeon E5 processors. Especially if you have tried it with the Xeon E5 V4 or if you have successfully unlocked Turbo Boost for Xeon E5 with a stepping less than 2, that would be very interesting. This Turbo Boost Unlock guide was made based on the two guides which I found online, one is in Russian, another one is in English. Thus I add the links to the original guides in the video description, credits to them. You can also go to my website and take a look at the Google Slides presentation that you have seen in this video to copy-paste all the commands you need to execute or just have it as a reference opened on a laptop or cell phone while unlocking Turbo Boost. That's all I have for you for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.